There are thousands of laboratories around the world working towards building knowledge for the future. In the light of the pressing environmental issues our planet is facing, some are starting to ask themselves, how environmentally friendly are research laboratories? And is it possible to make labs sustainable? Jennifer is a master student and laboratory assistant at the Microbial Oceanography Unit at the University of Vienna in the Department of Functional and Evolutionary Ecology. Jennifer works with marine bacteria and spends a large part of her days in the lab, processing samples and performing experiments. A lot of this work relies on single-use materials. I have to use a lot of single-use materials because I work with bacteria, and in order to prevent them from being contaminated, sometimes there is no other way but to use single-use material. Jennifer is not alone. Single-use plastic items are routinely used in different types of laboratories all around the world. In 2015, a study estimated that 5.5 million tons of plastic waste was produced worldwide solely in bioscience labs. This is more than the country of India produced in 2010. Plastic is not the only resource Jennifer uses for her research. To perform experiments and process and store samples, she relies on daily water use, chemicals, and a large range of highly energy-intensive machines. These include centrifuges, freezers, fridges, drying ovens, and high-end analytical instruments. A fume hood, for example, which is one of the largest energy hogs in a lab, consumes 3.5 times more energy than an average house. Just like Jennifer, there are thousands of researchers around the world whose research relies on many of these resources on a daily basis. There was a point during my daily lab work when I noticed that I'm using a ton of of uh, single-use materials like plastics and since I was already environmentally aware and trying to live as uh, sustainably as possible in my private life, I, I came to the point that I was really thinking, okay, something has to be done in this environment as well. Melina and Philip work at the Archaea Biology and Ecogenomics Unit from the Department of Functional and Evolutionary Ecology at the University of Vienna. Together with their fellow researchers, they started thinking about ways to make their laboratory more environmentally sustainable. Plastic waste is something we are confronted with every day, and we are also marching with uh, Fridays for Future uh, on Fridays. And uh, so this made us all aware of the plastic waste or the plastic that is used in the supermarkets. And um, one day in the lab garden, when we all went for shopping at the local grocery store, we just ended up with a huge pile of plastic on the table. And this is when we uh, decided we want to do something about it. So we decided to do an experiment. We asked the cleaning staff of the university to not empty our waste bins in the lab for a whole week. And we were shocked to discover in the end this huge pile of plastic produced in just in the time course of one week by a handful of researchers. In Molina and Philip's lab, a single scientist was estimated to use approximately 52 kilograms of plastic in one year. This amounts to a total of 1.5 tons of plastic waste produced yearly in a lab of 30 people. Most of this plastic ends up incinerated or deposited in landfills. So we started replacing certain single-use plastic items, such as certain spatulas that are used to plate microorganisms or tubes used for cultivation. And we ended up establishing a, a relatively simple recycling pipeline for various types of plastic. And we also looked at the energy consumption of big machines like our ultra freezers and um, we changed their temperature by only 10 degrees and this made a huge difference. Now they're consuming 30% less of what they did before. 
soon after these um, first actions, we um, also realize that these can only be starting points for raising awareness and that they won't bring the change that is actually needed, for instance, to uh, reduce the CO2 emissions to zero in the next uh, five to ten years. So, of course, we're trying not to lose sight of our final goal, which is ultimately a systemic change, a, a transformation of the system to a more sustainable one, to a future-proof one, if you want. So, by changing our habits in the lab, um, our conceptual approach to research changes as well, and that can extend to everything, to the choice of research topics, to the choice of model organisms, to a whole culture change in, in, the, in our research environments. With the aim of bringing labs together to think about these problems and find long-lasting solutions, the Green Labs Austria initiative was created. Shortly after, new labs started to join. I decided to join the Green Labs Austria team because I wanted to be actively part of this transformation from, from the structures that we have it now into a more sustainable um, yeah, lab everyday life. So this is basically what we're trying to do with Green Labs, to create a network of bottom-up initiatives with the aim to, to change the policies and influence somewhat slow adapting institutions such as universities. And for achieving this, uh, we need everyone, like all labs, on board. So we want to encourage scientists that feel like us to coordinate actions and join us. And to think of how the lab of the future could look like with us.